Hey, welcome back. Uh, this is the second part of our trailer hitch assembly. Uh, this first part, we probably got, I think we've gotten this portion of it done. Um, what we're going to work on next are, are all this back portion of it. I'm going to try to keep the videos down to about 20 minutes. Uh, it seems like that tends to work out good for everybody to kind of keep their, their train of thought going. Uh, the part that you should have already made is going to be this green section right here. If you haven't made that, there's a link in the uh, video description on this one where you can actually go back and make this particular part of it and then you can come back and catch up on on this video so let's go ahead and get started with the model you should have this portion of it open uh, as I said we're going to build the um, the square tubing that goes to meets up with this body and then the square tubing where that fits into the receiver uh, we'll probably get the hitch pin made in this video and um, well let's get started so first and foremost, we want to create some uh, reference geometry. So I select reference geometry and we want to create a plane. So I select plane. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to pick a plane and then I'm going to put it a, put a distance out there. Uh, the plane that I want to use for my first reference is going to be the right plane. And then I want to give it a distance of maybe 16 inches. All right, now it's pointing the wrong direction, so I want to flip the offset. So instead of it being in front of the trailer hitch, I want it to be behind it. So I just come over to the tree, flip offset, and it's back here. Once you get this portion looking like this, we want to go ahead and accept that. And now it's still in the cache, so we can create an extruded boss base on that. So I select extruded boss base. I'm going to use my Control A command to orient normal to where I'm looking. Um, instead of using like a rectangle or anything, I want to use a polygon. So I select a polygon and I want to give it a number of sides of four, which is going to give us a square and it's defaulted at inscribe circle, which I want to use. So it's going to put a circle in, in the middle of our square and our square is going to be tangent to all four sides to the circle. So that's going to be controlled by a dimension. So we want to select a smart dimension. I want to pick the circle itself. I want it to be two. Um, I need a position of up and down on this thing. So let's come to the origin and then we want to pick the circle again. It's automatically going to default to the center of it. I want to give it say six. Now there's a couple relations that we're going to have to add. This thing will slide back and forth and it will also rotate. So I want to make sure that we get this thing oriented. So I'll click that in the space somewhere. I come click on this line, fly out pops up and I can make this horizontal. So that's part of our relation. So I'll click out. So these two lines, they're, they're turning, they're black, so they're telling me that they're pretty close to being defined, but now we need to orient this thing where it's side to side. So what I want to do is I'm going to hold my control key down. I'm going to click the center of my circle. I'm going to select the origin as well. Now notice over here it says point of origin and point five. There are no existing relations, and these are the relations that I can add. Now it gives me the hint, this vertical is bolded out, so that's the one that I actually want as well. So it picked the right one. So I go ahead and accept it. Now, most of your square tubing is uh, going to be hollow and it also has a fillet radius on here. So let's come up and we want to select a sketch fillet. Uh, let's make it like 0.38, like 3 eighths of an inch. And then I can come pick each individual one of these, but I just want to draw a selection window around it. So I'm going to click, hold my mouse down, draw a selection window around. And my corners are constrained still, so it's keep corners constrained. So that's going to keep all the relations. So I'll go ahead and accept that. And now what I want to do is I want to create a quarter inch wall tube. So I'm going to come up and use offset entities. Now I want to make sure that select chain is here. And the size of this is going to be a quarter inch wall. And now I'm coming up pick this uh, one of just any line on the uh, sketch but it's going the wrong direction. So I want to come back to the tree and I'm going to reverse it because I want that to be on the inside. So we'll go ahead and accept that. I'm going to use the control seven command where we can see what's going on. So when I exit my sketch, it's going to try to extrude that profile. And instead of being blind, I actually want it to go up to a body. And I want to make sure that I do not have merge results checked because I want all these individual pieces because we're going to try to create a weldment at the end of this. So I'll select this body. And that is what I want, and I go ahead and accept that as well. All right, so now we're going to need to create something for this tube to fit in. So let's go ahead and select Extruded Boss Base, and we want to pick that plane again. So we use a Control A command, but all of this other stuff is in my way. So let's come, let's come over here and let's hide some of these things. So I want to, and we know that the last one is that square tubing. So I'm going to click on this one. 
hold my shift key down and click on the very top one, release my shift key, and select the eyeball of the glasses. So now we have our square tubing out here. I also want to hide plane number three because it's kind of getting in the way as well. So I click on plane three. So now we just have the square tube. Now I don't want to create all this sketch again, so let's just go um, offset entities. I pick this face. It forced it out 0.250. I do want that. So I'm going to go ahead and accept it. Now it's going to create a solid in here, but what I want to do is I want to do another offset entities. So we still want it to be a quarter of an inch, but I didn't select chain, so I need to make sure that I select chain so it grabs every bit of it. And it's going outside, which I don't want, so I'm going to reverse it as well to where it goes into right here at this last shape that we had. So let's go ahead and accept it. Real life, there's going to be some clearance in here. This uh, virtual world, we're not really going to have any clearance in it. We're not too concerned with it, though. So now we want to exit this sketch. My extrusion is going that direction. I want to make my extrusion go this way, maybe one inch. I also want to make sure that I uncheck merge results. Now I'm going to have to, I'm going to expand direction two out. Now I have to hit this check right here. I have to select it just to make sure that we can go direction two. So I'm going to drag this out along this area. So let's make it maybe 5.5 make sure merge results is not checked and we want to accept it the reason why I put one inch back here is so we can slide this thing in and adjust for the hole later on so we go ahead and check and now we have another square tube now this tube may get in our way may confuse us so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pick let's just do it from the graphics area so I click on it and then I can actually hide it from over here. So that way I don't have to search over here to find out what it is. Now I want to create another extrusion out here. Sometimes you've got a collar on the end of this as well to it just to give it some reinforcement. So let's select extrusion boss base. We want to pick this face. I'm going to use my control eight command to make it normal. Now we used that handy dandy offset entities before. Let's pick that. It went out a quarter of an inch. So let's go ahead and accept it. Let's use it one more time. So we select offset entities. I remember from last time, I didn't say select chain first. It's gonna go a quarter of an inch. So I'll pick any one of those lines. It's going a quarter inch the wrong direction. So let's select reverse and we go ahead and check. So now we have the makings of a collar that we're gonna put on here. Uh, so we exit the sketch. Our extrusion is going off of the part, but I really want it to go the other way. So I select opposite. And let's make this maybe 0.375. And we want to make sure that we uncheck merge results because we're going to weld this together. So check. So now we have eight bodies here. Um, so I want to show this one as well. Let's just show them all. So click here, click here, and show. So that's the progress that we've made so far. Now, um, we're going to need to poke a hole in this thing so we can put a hitch pin in here. Uh, our front plane is a good option for this because it runs in the middle of this. So if we put a drill bit on there, so let's say extruded cut. We pick the front plane, say extruded cut, control eight. Now I'm going to draw me a center line just to give myself some, some reference. So I pick this, pull it out on the midpoint and I come over here and I can pick the midpoint of that. Now, so I'm going to use a circle. So I'll come up and grab a circle, a center. I don't want to put it on the midpoint of this because I want to be able to control it with some dimensions. So I'm going to put it on the line itself, pull it out, place it down. And let's say we're going to use a one inch hitch pin. So we'll go one. All right. So that's the size, but we don't have it located. So I'm going to come to this left hand edge, pick the circle itself. And I think you want it to be 3.5 maybe. Sure. 3.5. And we can exit our sketch. Now we have this circle that's in the middle of these two parts. So the direction of this, I want to go through all both. When we do that, hopefully it's going to cut both of those parts. All right. So we go ahead and accept it. And we now have a hole that's located evenly between all of us. So our order of operations, instead of having to come in here and do this thing twice, we've, we've done it in the right order. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add me a little bit of uh, reference geometry in the middle of this. So I want to put a point in here so I can put a plane on here later. So I'm going to select the front plane again. 
I'm going to say sketch. I want to use a control A just to kind of get us back to looking normal. And then we want to come up and pick a sketch point. Now I come tickle this edge and then the center point shows up in my circle. So I want to place the point there. I use my escape key a couple times. Look down to the bottom right hand side. We're fully defined. So we're now at can exit this sketch. All right. So I want to put a plane or something that we could draw a path on here for our, our hitch pin. You remember our right plane was a good one to force it that direction. So I picked the right plane. Now I'm going to come up and say reference geometry and pick a plane. So it automatically kept the right plane in the cache for us. It says 16 inches. That's really not what I want. But my second point of reference in here is going to be the point that we just drew. So I picked that. I picked the point that we just drew. And now we've got a plane right in the middle of that hole. And it will always be there since we're using that reference geometry. So I accept it. And we want to create a sketch on that plane. So I open up the sketch tab. Just because I open the sketch tab does not mean that I have selected a sketch. So select sketch. Now we're in sketching mode and I'm going to use the control A command. Now all of this stuff is in my way again. I don't really want it to be showing. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick the one above our last one. I'm going to pick this one, hold the shift key, and I want to hide everything. So now let's come up and grab a regular line and I just want to start out here on this side somewhere, pull it across, place it down and place it down. So we got this figure here. Now I didn't place it on here because I want to kind of show you how to do that. So let's use the control command, control, click the point, click the line. Now it thinks that it says line and the point, but I have no existing relations. It thinks I want to go midpoint. I don't want to do that. I just want it to be coincident. So it's going to occupy the same space. And then I accept it. So now I'm ready to part, put some dimensions on here. So smart dimension. I'm going to pick this left edge and my end point of the line. And let's make that 1.5. All right. Now let's dimension this line, the entire line. So I'll pick it. Let's make it 5. Now, we need an angle between these two lines. So let's pick a line, pick another line, pull it out, place it down with the third selection. Let's make, go ahead and make it 150 degrees. Now, the only thing that's still blue is this one. We still know that we're underdefined. So I pick this line. I can pull it out parallel. I can pull it out horizontal, or I can pull it out vertical. Just whatever preference you are. And this time, I want it to be uh, parallel dimension. Let's go ahead and make it 1.5. All right, so now this sketch is fully defined. We're really not going to use it for anything in this moment, but we're going to use it later on for our sweep. All right, so plane, this plane is in my way, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hide it. Now, I want to create a new plane, so with some reference geometry. So we're not in sketch, so we go to features, and we select reference geometry, and we select plane. So we've got to pick a couple different things. We really need three points to define this, but in this, for this one, we can actually use a line and we can use the end point of that line. So that's going to infer some dimensions, I mean, infer some sketch points for us. So I'm going to pick the line. So we're still underdefined. It doesn't know where we want it, but our second reference is the end point of that line. So it's going to orient it normal to this particular line and we can go ahead and accept it. So I want to create a sketch on there. And this is going to be the profile that we're going to sweep along this path. I need to go back and correct this path. But let's go ahead and finish this sketch. So we come select sketch, tab. Then we select sketch. And then we we'll use the control A command. I want to come up and grab a circle. I want to come to the origin, pull it out, place it down. And let's give ourselves just a little bit of clearance in here. And let's make that 0.99. And we're fully defined and we can now exit this sketch. I also want to hide this last plane so I'll pick it and I hide. Now what I don't like about my path is it has this sharp corner in here. So let's go back and we want to edit this. So just because you've made a mistake we, we know that we can go back and edit something. So I'm going to come over here. Mine is called sketch 21. I'm not sure what yours is. So I'm going to click on it and then we want to edit the sketch. What I'd like to do is add a fillet radius right here. So let's come up and add a sketch fillet. 
let's make it say one let's make it 1.5 and then we'll want to pick that right there and accept it so what that's going to do is give us a smooth transition when we get ready to do our sweep so let's go ahead and accept it and we want to exit this sketch so now what we have is we have a profile that we can sweep along this guide so with that being said those two sketches we're going to use we're going to go to features and then we're going to select swept uh, swept ball space so it gives us the hint this one is actually kind of the profile that we have so we have a circular profile and then we have a path so the prof profile that we want to sweep is the circle it automatically moved us down to the next selection window so our path you can pick any line on here and it's going to give us that preview and now we go ahead and accept it so we now have the beginnings of our hitch pin uh, one thing that we want to do there let's go back and edit that so I click on that feature and edit under options I want to make sure that we uncheck merge results even though we were smaller if we ever change the size on this it may touch another body and then it may cause problems later on so we've, we've unchecked merge results all right, so now the next thing that we want to do is I want to put in a lead-in chamfer on this end. So we'll come up to uh, where your fillet command is, drop the chevron down. We want to select chamfer. Uh, let's give this thing, say, 80 degrees and 0.1. And then we want to come pick this edge. Make sure you got your full preview on. That looks like a pretty, let's make it, yeah, that's fine. So we go ahead and accept it. So there's our lead-in for our our hitch pin and now the other end it needs a little we don't want a sharp corner on it so let's come select fillet point one I'm going to pick the face it's giving me my preview I'm happy we accept it as well I'm going to use the control 7 command for isometric um, now would be a good time to save it so we want to create a hole in our hitch pin so remember we created some planes out here before so I like this plane plane number four so I'm going to pick plane four and I'm going to select sketch and then I'm going to use the control a command and then I click out in the space somewhere and plane four disappears I didn't show it but I just I'm using it so I want to come up and grab a center line just to give myself a little bit of ease for geometry use so pick midpoints on both of those so that line's fully defined now I'm going to come up and grab a circle like I was going to just take a drill bit and drill through here so I pick that line pull it out place it down and I need to give this a dimension let's make it 3 16 or so 0.19 and then we need a distance from this left edge to the circle let's make it 0.2 so that's where our pin is going to go and now we can go to features and say extrude cut and I roll it around and I want to say through all both so we accept it now when we were doing that if we would have had this feature showing it would have cut through here or it would have asked us if we wanted to cut through it all or everything else so the when you have some of these things hidden it's going to really and truly help you out with this so everybody do a control 7 um, let's show our body so notice this one's in between the two so I click on it and I hit the eyeball and now I can come up to the ones that are above it and I can click on the lowest most that's hidden hold my shift key down click on the top one release it and I can show those as well I'm going to use my F button for the fit and we are getting pretty close to 20 minutes on this so I think our next video is going to be the hairpin and the rest of this so y'all go ahead and save this and we will see you in the next video